the now over 20 year long history of the Halo franchise, veteran Halo fans would recognize that there is one enemy that stands out above all others. And that of course is the Flood. There is a mountain of resources that one could use to learn more about their history, but today I've done my very best to give you a summary from the very origins of the Flood all the way to the firing of the Halo array. Their appearances in the Halo games are but only a fraction of their presence in the actual Halo timeline, with the origins of the Flood dating back over 10 million years before the Master Chief even stepped foot on a Halo. But like I said, we're condensing a lot of information down into one video. So if I left anything out or you personally wanted to add something, just let us know down in the comment section below. But with all of that said, strap in, because we're going back to the very beginning. Over 15 million years ago, the species known as the Precursors would enter the Milky Way galaxy for the first time. With their vast wisdom and unrivaled technology even to this day, they began to place the seeds across the galaxy, which would give life to a number of intelligent life forms. Acting as architects, they went on to create a handful of hyper-intelligent species with the hopes that one day they might leave the responsibility and protection of our galaxy to just one of them. But when the species known as the Forerunners were deemed unworthy of inheriting this mantle of responsibility, they became enraged and declared war against their precursors. Completely taking them by surprise and overwhelming them with their ferocity, the Forerunners would commit a mass genocide of the precursor race, almost completely pushing them to extinction. However, a handful of these precursors did survive and were able to flee to the edges of the galaxy and beyond. Not wanting to abandon their duties entirely, the Precursors had hoped to wait out any future threats, and due to their species' unique abilities and advanced technologies, entered a state of suspended animation. In doing this, they turned themselves into a dust-like substance, which would remain undisturbed aboard their ships for millions of years, or until they deemed it safe to emerge again. However, over the millions of years following this transformation, the biological structure of this organic dust would degrade, and in turn, became corrupted. Around the year of 107,445 BCE, roughly 10 million years following the Forerunner's genocide, the ships which held the powdered remains of the surviving precursors would eventually begin to fail. After eons of neglect and use, their ships crashed onto the surface of a number of worlds, where species such as ancient humanity and their ally, the Sanchayum, would stumble upon the wreckage. Initially, they were unable to determine what exactly this substance was, but after careful analysis, they deemed the substance was indeed organic and also non-toxic. They also discovered that it could induce psychotropic effects when fed to lower animal species, such as the dog-like species known as the Feru. In the following years, they went on to distribute these corrupted precursor remains across their controlled space. However, it would go on realize that this corrupted substance was beginning to alter the genome of those who consumed it. After several hundred centuries, species such as the Feru began to develop genetic abnormalities brought on by this precursor powder, which then over time jumped species to ancient humans. It had originally manifested as fleshy protrusions and furry growths, which other animals were compelled to consume, causing them to become sick and diseased themselves. Those exposed to these infected animals would also manifest these same symptoms, with any around them also unwillingly compelled to consume these diseased individuals. This shaping sickness began to change the host physically, reshaping their form almost entirely. These grotesque amalgamations of flesh and bone were designed to gather victims, engage in combat, or rapidly consume biomass and other valued resources. It was at this point that the flood infection was truly beginning to take shape, spreading across the galaxy at an alarming speed. In an attempt to prevent the Flood from infecting the entire galaxy, ancient humanity took it upon themselves to sterilize any world or ship that it touched, including those inhabited by the Forerunners. With no time for delay, Forth and Cho, commander of the human fleets, chose not to warn the Forerunners of this advancing Flood, not wanting to risk it spreading further as a result of Forerunner expansion. However, the Forerunners interpreted humanity's actions as aggression, and so began the Human Forerunner War. Because of this, humanity was now fighting a two-sided front against both the Forerunners and the Flood. Once humanity began to show signs of wear from the Forerunners' response, the Flood pulled its attention away from them, focusing all of their efforts on the Forerunners. 
As it seemed their spread was beginning to reach a halt, the Flood decided to retreat to the edges of the galaxy and regroup, leaving humanity to the full force of the Forerunner's wrath. The disappearance of the Flood quickly allowed the Forerunners to regain the upper hand in the Human Forerunner War, and after years of combating the Flood, the Forerunners, and from the betrayal of their allies, the San Shayum, humanity had been pushed to their limit. And after the siege of their capital world, Cherimakor, they had lost the war. And as reparations for their actions, humanity would be devolved to an ancestral primitive state. The Forerunners would then go on to erase the history of their achievements from the galaxy, and then exile the species to their home world of Erde Tyrene or as we know it, Earth. Here they would live under the watchful eye of the Forerunners, as well as the life worker, the Librarian, who saw much potential in them. After Cher Makor had been seized by the Forerunners, it was discovered that the humans had been holding prisoner a being known as the Primordial. This being was the last known living precursor in existence. The Didact personally visited the creature himself, having previously thought its existence to be a lie. When the Didact returned to the Ecumene, he did share the existence of this being, but chose not to share the history between their two species. He did this out of fear that it might destabilize the Forerunner morale. With the Flood now non-existent and the humans no longer a threat, the Forerunners moved to another era of expansion, met with disagreements on how they should prepare for future threats. Two options would be proposed, the Halo Array Superweapon, championed by the Builder Rate, and the creation of planet-sized fortresses called Shield Worlds, which was spearheaded by the Didact. The Halo Array concept ultimately having won the political battle would cause a massive political shift. The disgraced Prometheans and other members of the military such as the Didact were given the dignified option of self-exile, given the option of being held in stasis within cryptums. Some however would opt to join the ranks of the Builder Security. But with this shift in priorities and the lack of military presence, the Forerunners were entirely unprepared for the return of the Flood. And this was even after the Didact would return to aid in the war effort, as his cryptum had been stumbled upon by a Forerunner now known to be the Isodidact. The damage caused by all of this would be irreversible. On the planet of Seaward, the Forerunners were entirely unprepared for the return of the Flood, with it now demonstrating strategic planning. This was due to the emergence of the Grave Mines, massive amalgamations of biomass which acted as central intelligence for the collective consciousness shared across the entirety of the Flood. Having returned with overwhelming numbers and this major advancement, there was little that they could do to halt its progression. In many last-ditch efforts, some would utilize localized weapons of mass destruction, have entire Forerunner armadas carry out complete planetary bombardment, or would even consider sending stars into premature supernovas. One thing was clear now. All options would likely require the sacrifice of billions of Forerunner lives. Yet, it would all be done with the hopes of slowing the Flood. Above the planet of Cher Makor, the Halo Ring known as Installation 07 would be test-fired by the Contender Class AI, Mendicon Bias. This would reveal that the Ring's Halo effect was not only capable of destroying the neurological structure within life forms, but also the complete destruction of artifacts of neurophysics, the theoretical science by which precursor technologies and artifacts functioned. This unintended side effect also broke the time lock prison which was holding the Primordial down below, prompting the creature's transfer to Zeta Halo. During the 43 years that it would spend on the ring, the Primordial was able to communicate with and even corrupt mendicant bias. The real danger behind this was that the AI was in charge of all of the Forerunner defenses, and the rampancy it would experience would culminate into what would be labeled as the Logic Plague. Being the inorganic equivalent of the Flood infestation, this would turn AI against the Forerunners, as well as any other Forerunner technologies that it would come in contact with. As the war against the Flood infestation raged on, Mendicant Bias would be contained, and the Isodidact would travel to Zeta Halo, convening with the Primordial one last time. Here, the Didact used the stasis chamber that held it to kill the Precursor, causing its body to experience billions of years of decay in a matter of seconds. In its final moments, it clarified the unifying purpose of the Flood, that humanity was destined to inherit the mantle of responsibility, and that the Precursors in the Flood were one and the same. While not intended, the death of the Primordial's body allowed its consciousness to join that of the collective Flood mind, causing its intelligence to increase tenfold. The repercussions of this would be felt when the Ur Didact would later encounter a Grave Mind. After having inflicted unspeakable horrors to the Ur Didact as revenge for the actions of the Iso Didact, the Grave Mind released him in a broken and maddened state, knowing that he would surely cause chaos amongst the Forerunners in the coming years. 
During the final years of the Forerunner Flood War, the Flood grew to unfathomable numbers and strength, and they also began to change their strategy against the Forerunners. Instead of directly engaging them in combat, they would solely focus on infection, targeting densely populated worlds. The reason for this was that the Flood now began converting entire planetary biospheres into key mines, which were the product of converting the biomass of the planet's terrestrial lifeforms into one single body. These would act as strategic processing points, pushing the intelligence and computational power of the Flood far beyond the Forerunner's capabilities. Alongside this, the Logic Plague was beginning to greatly hinder Forerunner defense measures, as much of their society relied heavily on the use of AI for automation. But the most disturbing revelation was that the Flood were now able to access ancient precursor technology, primarily star roads, which allowed them to travel across the galaxy with alarming efficiency. This paired with the presence of multiple Flood key mines would hinder Forerunner slipspace travel due to the Flood's manipulation of space itself. With the ur didact having been broken by the Gravemind many years before, he abandoned all previous logic and sought any means to make the Forerunners completely immune to the Flood Parasite. This would lead to the Prometheans of Requiem. He proposed that the Promethean Warrior Servant Rate and all Forerunners could be immunized by transferring their consciousness to mechanized bodies. These bodies would contain the digitally composed essence of a Forerunner, which could then later be returned to an organic form once the Flood were completely destroyed. Similar to how it was seen with the Precursors, composed individuals would be incapable of returning to their previous organic state. At this point in history, the Builder Rate had been removed from power and the Prometheans reinstated. But due to his radical ideas and that his word did not carry the same way it did millennia before, the Erdidact's plans would go unsupported, with the Isodidact having taken the former's place on the council. Because of this, he would return to his shield world of Requiem with a few of his still loyal Promethean soldiers intent on reaching his goals. Utilizing the Composer, he would convert his remaining followers and a large number of ancient humans. After learning of his forced conscription of the humans, the Librarian would subdue and imprison the Didact inside of a cryptum she hid on Requiem, tasking his Prometheans with preventing anyone from allowing him to awaken again. With every countermeasure against the Flood having failed, the Forerunners now only had one final option, to deploy and activate the Halo Array. Composed of seven ring-like megastructures scattered across the galaxy, these superweapons would purge the galaxy of all life with a central nervous system. And due to the parasitic nature of the Flood, this would deprive them of a food source. After much political disagreement over the ethical implications, the Halo Array would be fired by the Isodidact from the Ark in the year 97,445 BCE. Strategically positioned across the galaxy, the Halo Rings went off simultaneously, sending out a shockwave that killed all life in an instant. That is, with the exception of the mysterious Zelenin species, which we still know very little about. But finally, after millions upon millions of years, the threat of the Flood was finally over. Some specimen would be kept safely in storage for research purposes, but any of those remaining outside of containment died out completely. Once the threat of the Flood was finally at its end, a plan was set in motion by the life worker known as the Librarian, which saw to the receding of the galaxy's many species. Over the course of the Forerunner Flood War, she and fellow life workers had painstakingly cataloged as many species as possible, having safely stored them inside Silexes on the Ark and other installations, safe from the reach of the Ring's halo effect. After ensuring the reseeding efforts had been successful, the Forerunners went into self-imposed exile, with most returning to their homeworld to live out their final days. In hopes of making amends for their mistakes, the Forerunners chose humanity as the heirs to their technologies and passed along to them the mantle of responsibility. I know we covered a lot in today's video, as it's 15 million years all condensed down into a short amount of time. So I may have skipped some things. I may not have fully expanded on something that you want to learn more about. But like I said before, if there's anything that you wanted to suggest or something that I should do in a future video, please just let us all know down in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed the content, please be sure to like the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more of my content. But that's all for now because my voice hurts, but I will see you in the next video.